Hey guys, boy here, and this is how to play Pudge in 707 featuring TI Winner Liquid G8. In this game, you can expect a lot of hooks and a lot of hooks, a lot of hooks, because that's what win games, right? Pudge is about diving people at 15 minutes, dying, complaining, and uh, buying back afterwards. So this game is quite fascinating. The first aspect of it I want to comment on is G8 going towards the mid block instead of fighting. If you take a look on the enemy cores, we have Puck and Wind Ranger, two heroes you can't really chase down with Rod at level one. So instead of burning HP and time, he decided to give his mid Luna a small advantage, which she needs since she's a mid Luna, and the other lane contains a Puck plus Bane. In more than 50% of the situations you want to get Rot as your first skill, but in a dual lane like this, there's no one to be chased, and he tries to go for the level 1 hook play into the tier 1 tower. This is not what you usually want to be doing as a Pudge, but your role as a roamer comes after your mid lane is secured. I have no idea why they have a mid Luna and an off lane Shadow Demon, but as a support you need to mimic the other 4 position if he's jeopardizing your mid lane, and that's what he's doing here. As you can see, most of his hooks were not effective, but his presence there definitely skewed the tides of how this lane would play. Puck has less less hits than Luna, and they were able to get a decent amount of range creep than ice thanks to Luna's aura. What really stood out to me this game is how GH plays around the runes more than most supports when he's playing Pudge. A lot of people know that he can hook runes, but you also region the mana you spend if you get a successful one, making it very valuable for this hero to go for this. At 140, he abandons his Luna to the wolves and grabs both Bellion runes, and his first 10 minutes of the game, and actually pretty much the entire game, are pretty much played around doing whatever he wants, but always getting bounties when possible. As he goes back to help Luna again, a fight starts top, and not only they secure the enemy core Pay attention how instead of running forward he enters the trees, Bane is level 2 and can brain sap him, and because of it he survives. Most people remember that suiciding got nerfed a while back, but what most people fail to realize is that only Sudoku to jungle creeps gives you a bigger respawn timer. By suiciding here, especially after the changes to respawn time, he saves quite a bit of time. Enough time actually to grab a bounty with the aid of his hook, and since G8 is such a nice guy, he even gifts Winter one extra. Not only he got that rune, but, but afterwards G8 even placed wards to a location that already already had words before. Uh, I'm not saying that this is how you should play Pudge every game, but if you actually watch the entire footage, you will see that G8 misses a shit ton of hooks this game. Which because the enemy picks are actually pretty good against Pudge, and because of that, G8 plays around the runes so that he can have levels and gold to be useful later on. In the last patch, there was not a lot of incentives to go for stacks, but in this one, with the likes of Lunas, Medusas being back into the meta, Ancients are a great way to increase your course farm, and we see G8 doing a lot of that this game. If it's nighttime, make sure to come slightly earlier, because you're gonna have to wake those fuckers up. Usually, what you see in games is that players will stack at all times and grab runes during even times, but with Vision from Windranger bot and no TP, he can actually go for the stack, kill Windranger as she runs away towards a weird direction, and then grab all runes thanks to his early ward without putting himself in danger. As I comment on some item decisions from G8 this game, I want to show you two clips where DH and his team wasted a lot of time chasing targets, and that goes back to the draft and why I feel like G8 felt underwhelming in the early. That being said though, from the draft alone, he knew that and played accordingly. I know there are a lot of Adderland addicts watching this video, but without exception, watching games of Miracle, G8, Kuroki, Weeha, they always go for the same build on the new Pudge. Tranko Boots with Wind Lace on top of it, followed by either Urn or Soul Ring and a later Hood. The thing about Hood on the new Pudge is the two new talents at level 10 and 15. Not only you deal more damage with Rot, so taking less of it because of Hood and having HP regen is great synergy, but being able to nullify 300 damage from your own Rot or enemy damage while you live steal from it is a lot of value in teamfights. In this game, I feel like G8 went Soul Ring instead of Urn because he knew it was hard for him to get solo kills. So Soul Ring allows him to spam more hooks and maybe increase the chance he actually landed one because he's super bad. For the network charge, it's very easy to see that his team is behind. So G8 kept focusing in stacking for his Luna and grabbing as many bounty runes he could. But not only that, as I talked about in Soneko's Pudge video, this hero is great at pushing waves. Not only the new ult helps, but the new talents help even more. So by having vision of Jakiro and Puck mid, as well as that ward, he goes top to push wave. A lot of people forget that this game is about pushing waves, and if you can't take towers after pushing one, at least you're delaying the enemy until your own power spike comes. I'm gonna talk a lot about pushing waves here. Winter Weaver also understand that, and for a while she was hiding in the trees, split pushing with her W top. Another interesting thing is that after level 6, G8 never came back to base with Tranquils and later with Hood. You should never lack HP or mana region, and that gives you naturally more levels and gold. As his team cleared the ancients, he made sure to farm mid, and by watching WW being ganked, he has the 
Sheridan to hook the bounty rune from the dire side. This is the best example of a game where Pudge shouldn't be hunting for kills. Every enemy has a way to cancel this member, a lot of those heroes also have escapes and they are quite behind in networks, so trying to dive, trying to go for mindless kills would only put his team in an even worse situation. The only reason they even engage here is that G8 finds an out of position Monkey King, but he clicked on him before going for the hook, he knows about the BKB, so as soon as he gets popped, instead of forcing his team to commit to what would be a certain death mission, he just disengages. He saw Monkey King using balance recognition, so he knows that it's not that dangerous, and this is why Radiant even bothers to attempt this fight over here. Obviously, it's incredibly difficult for them to win, and what unfolds is Dyer closing in at 10k gold lead. It keeps getting worse and worse, because now it's not only Monkey King that has a huge adventure over them. Even with vision of Monkey King farming, Radiant attempts a gank and G8 dies immediately. This effect snowballs into what's eventually a 23k gold lead for the dire side. So how do they win? Well, first of all, Pudge with these items is damn great at pushing waves. With one dismember and rot, especially after level 15 with spell lifesteal, he can easily tank super creep waves with dismember, and that allows his team to be able to make plays without hindering their tier 4s, and that's even more important than last patch because they don't have region anymore. On top of that, the fact that Pudge can hook Monkey King out of his ult felt like a very strong tool for Radiant, considering that Monkey King represents the entire network difference between teams. On top of that, they get one of the luckiest Roshan spawns of Dota history. On top of that, pay attention to G8's movements. After they take Roshan, I could see 95% of the players that watch this channel TPing back because they are afraid of dying. Instead, he kindly asks Winter Riven to bless him with the cube, and thanks to that, not only he snatches two bounty runes, he pushes two waves of creeps before going back. I'm trying to do this every video to remind the viewers Dota 2 is a game of pushing crapples to the other side of the map. If you can't push them and take towers, make sure to delay the enemy doing it. And well, my Dota 2 friends, you know what happens when you push waves? Back to defend. And usually if the enemy is not going to commit for a push, which is the case here since Radiant has ages on Shadow Demon plus Luna, the farming strong hero goes back to farm and that gives them one Bane kill. followed by a Wind Ranger kill and a nice touch of DH by waiting the Lucent Bean to land his hook. And unlike most supports, with so much HP region and the earn 2.0, they can keep going even though he's very low in HP. They take tier 2 and in minutes, what once was a 23k gold lead is now 14. All of that, by the way, accomplished without huge hooks and MLG no scope kills. People need to realize that Pudge is indeed a unique hero because of his Q, but he offers a lot of other stuff that can be used to turn games. When Dyer finally goes for the juggler, see what happens. So as the fight was going on before he arrived, his dismember lasts a decent amount of time and with the items he farmed by pushing waves and collecting bounties, allows him to buy a significant amount of time. Wukong's command is over and their tower is still quite healthy. His final hook baits Dyer in again and they hope. Thanks to Pudge's new talents and items, he's able to push top significantly, three waves in fact, and join his team for the mid push. With Dyer not using buybacks, his presence there is quite mediocre and he's able to contribute with the side lanes quite a lot. Thanks to a well positioned ward, he almost hooks Monkey King there, but honestly, it feels like it came for the best. Monkey King ult gets wasted, since top is so pushed now, they can make use of the double catapult wave, even if ever so slightly. But more important, the fight that ensues is very weird and split up, but the only reason Raiden can force so much out of the Dyer's side, even at a disadvantage, is because the top lane was so push. Radiant's team definitely scales better, but the damage done by Dyer was huge, and with the discipline to keep the lane so push, they slowly wear the Dyer down and grind their way back into the game.
You can see the DH pings top lane and that means it's time to go back, but it did great. What's even more interesting about this replay is that G8 tells his allies to go push top and he goes back, grabbing bounties and ideally he would like to kill that catapult in the bottom lane because they are the only lane they still have control of, but he gets spotted and has to retreat. But you can see what his mind is thinking at every moment, it's all about pushing those waves and delaying the game so that Luna can get huge. What ensues my friends is Radiant winning a fight because 8k gold lead in 40 minutes is not a lot and Radiant's heroes are just stronger, especially when they are the ones defending high ground. They kill 4 heroes without resorting to buybacks. And knowing that Bane doesn't have one, that becomes easy barracks for G8's team and eventually the game. Since he predicted that maybe Puck will try to creep skip, he makes sure to push bottom since as I said again, this hero is garbage at pushing and useless when people are dead. So his only job is making sure that Luna can actually hit the barracks when they get there. And uh, this game had a lot of impact coming from G8 and you can see that most of it, actually pretty much none of it came from hooks. It's fun to watch nice hooks, but it's also great to see that Ice Frog made this hero more than just a one dimension fat throwing spear dude, allowing him to be useful in different scenarios like this one. And I mean, they get barracks and they eventually win the game. As of always guys, Pugna supports this channel, those guys are great, I released my new series called Winners of Patch 700, so if you're interested in why some heroes are just better than others and how can you abuse them in ranked games, make sure to check that out. I'm also coaching via Gamer Sensei on my stream now, uh, it's actually both ways, you can get your normal coaching, but if you allow me to stream it, you can actually, after three coaching series, get uh, another one for free, so that's pretty Good. As I already said, I will be playing WESG on December 2nd, so if you're interested in me fitting as a position 4 support with 7k players, make sure to follow me on Twitch, and yeah guys, that's it. Hope you have a good day.